After completing this video, you will understand the advantages of adding equipment redundancy to a production process and be able to use Aspen Fidelis to improve system performance. With Aspen Fidelis, we can gather insights on the future performance of a system, assess the risk of a given design not meeting performance or operating cost targets, and identify design changes to improve the chances of meeting those targets. All of this can be done prior to performing a detailed cost estimation. One possible design change to improve reliability is the addition of redundant equipment. This involves the duplication of one or more components of a system in a parallel configuration. Most of the time, we can expect redundancy to increase reliability because parallel equipment will keep the unit operating if one of the components experiences a failure. Performance, expressed in terms of output and capacity, also increases as a result because of reduced downtime. On the other hand, more equipment can result in larger costs, so it is important to identify where redundancy is really needed. This course focuses on equipment redundancy, but it is worth noting that system performance and reliability can be increased in other ways. For example, having equipment with capacity turn-up capability, adding bypasses, and adding intermediate storage elements. We can model equipment redundancy in Aspen Fidelis. In this video, we will demonstrate how introducing parallel equipment in a green hydrogen production process leads to greater system output and reliability. We will first consider the base case simulated over 100 life cycles, then assess whether our system achieves the performance target of 2,590 tons per year in hydrogen production, with a probability of 80% or greater. Then, we will use culpability results to identify the unit or units that contribute the most to performance loss. Once we know this, we will be ready to define and evaluate three different redundancy scenarios. To begin, open the green hydrogen to ammonia base case single compressor Aspen Fidelis file. This is a model of a green hydrogen production system developed in Aspen Fidelis. The system considers electricity coming from a solar photovoltaic system and a wind farm. Electricity is routed to one of three places, the electrical grid, a battery unit with a capacity of 10 megawatts, and an electrolysis unit. Prior to entering the electrolyzers, the electricity is combined with additional input from electrical grid 2, and the resulting stream passes through an AC-DC converter. The electrolysis unit is supplied with water and an alkali. If we more closely examine the unit, we will see that it includes eight electrolyzer stacks placed in parallel. The electrolyzers produce oxygen, which leaves the system, and green hydrogen, which moves on to the next step, compression. The compression unit requires additional electricity to operate. Compressed hydrogen is stored in a six-ton tank. From there, it can be used directly on or off-site or sent to an ammonia production plant. Ammonia shipment and demand is also considered in this model. Let's open the Set Run Parameters window. We want to simulate this system over 100 life cycles, where each life cycle is one year. Click Run to start the simulation. This may take a while. As more life cycles are simulated, watch as the lower and upper bounds of utilized capacity converge. When the run has finished, we will open the results folder from the navigation pane. First, from the pipe drop-down menu, we'll select production. The histogram shows the annual production of hydrogen is roughly 2,584 tons per year, and that the variability of the system ranges from 2,560 to 2,610 tons per year. Next, select culpability. 
the culpability graph provides an indication of how much each event in the system contributes to performance loss. For this base case, compressor A is by far the most significant contributor. We may want to consider some options for improving the system around this element. One possibility involves adding redundancy to the compression unit. Let's define three redundancy scenarios. In the first of these, we've replaced the single compressor unit with two compressors in parallel. Each compressor can process 50% of the total flow, so we'll refer to this as the 2 by 50 scenario. In the rate multiplier element, we can see the number of parallel components required to reach 100% capacity. For this case, since each compressor can process 50%, both must run at all times to reach the target. Let's consider a second two-compressor configuration. In this setup, each compressor has a capacity of 100%, making this the 2 by 100 case. Since each compressor can process the entire flow, only one of the two must be up at a given time. This is indicated by the 1 in the rate multiplier dropdown. In addition, this means that one of the compressors is in a cold standby mode. Lastly, we've built a 3 by 50 compressor system. Three parallel compressors, each with a 50% capacity. The rate multiplier dropdown is set equal to 2 because, with the added third compressor, two of the three parallel components are required to reach 100% capacity. In the interest of time, simulations have already been run for each case. First, let's analyze the production and culpability results of the 2 by 50 run. We see similarities to the base case in terms of production, as roughly 2,584 tons of hydrogen are generated per year, with variability ranging from 2,565 to 2,600 tons per year. From the culpability graph, we observe a decrease in the per-event compressor culpability relative to the base case, but still, compressor units A and B represent the most significant contributors to performance loss. Next, revisiting the 2 by 100 case, we see that hydrogen production has increased to roughly 2,600 tons per year, with variability now ranging from 2,580 to 2,610 tons per year. From a culpability standpoint, the compressors in this configuration contribute far less to performance losses, which can likely be attributed to the increased availability of the units compared to the previous case. Now, the electrolyzer stacks represent the components of largest relative culpability. Lastly, in the 3 by 50 scenario, we obtain similar results to the 2 by 100 case. Annual hydrogen production is estimated at 2,600 tons per year, with variability ranging from 2,580 to 2,610 tons per year. In a similar way to the 2 by 100 case, the compressors have low relative culpabilities, leaving the electrolyzer stacks to share the highest relative contributions to performance loss. Based on production and culpability results of the three redundancy scenarios we've tested, we can expect either the 2 by 100 or 3 by 50 compressor configuration to improve performance and reliability relative to the base case while also meeting the production target. To decide between the two cases, we would need to perform an economic analysis. This can be done using Aspen Capital Cost Estimator, 